Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's video is going to be celebrating a film that really means uh, a great deal to me. Exactly 30 years ago tonight, which would have been November the 10th of 1990, uh, this film premiered on cable television, the Showtime Network. It was a pretty big event. It was hosted by Janet Lee, And not only was there a brand new film, but following that was the uncut original version of the 1960 classic Psycho. Of course, I am talking about Psycho for the beginning. This was Anthony Perkins' uh, final performance as Norman Bates. This film came out four years after Psycho 3, which had been in theaters uh, the summer of 1986. It was directed, of course, by Anthony Perkins and was not the box office hit that Universal Studios was hoping for. Psycho 2 had done very well. Psycho 3, while uh, some people enjoyed it and actually in some cases got better reviews uh, than Psycho 2, looked at as a failure. And Tony Perkins took that failure uh, particularly hard. Psycho 3 was his directorial debut and uh, he had actually been working out Psycho for um, treatment with the screenwriter of Psycho 3, Charles Edward Pogue. And that screenplay was going to involve, uh, it was almost gonna be more of a black comedy where uh, the Psycho house and motel had been turned into like a weekend of horrors uh, kind of uh, like murder mystery excursion and uh, Norman Bates escapes from the mental institution with a mute patient and ends up back at the Bates Motel where he ends up he ends up getting cast to play Norman Bates in the actual tourist attraction. Uh, this was something that they supposedly pitched to Universal, but Universal was not interested. Instead, for Psycho 4 The Beginning, they decided that since the theatrical returns for Psycho 3 had not been that strong, that this would go to a made-for-television route, uh, specifically made for cable television, because this movie is still rated R, still features uh, graphic violence and nudity, and uh, they also went back to original Psycho uh, screenwriter Joseph Stefano. And having not really been a fan of Psycho 2 and 3, Stefano chose to ignore a lot of the plot threads that were established in those films. Director Mick Garris would helm this film. Of course, Tony Perkins would come back to reprise Norman Bates, but this time at a, kind of a lesser extent than he had in the previous films. There are a lot of flashbacks in this film to Norman's childhood and the events that lead to him uh, killing his mother and her boyfriend. A seemingly rehabilitated Norman Bates is drawn to a late night radio show where host Fran Ambrose encourages him to share his views on the topic of matricide. Reliving his childhood, Norman recounts the trials as a young boy living with his widowed schizophrenic mother. Those haunting memories threaten to rekindle his killing urge. In the cast you have uh, Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates, you have CCH Ponder as Fran Ambrose. Uh, you have Henry Thomas as young Norman Bates, Olivia Husby as Norma Bates, Warren Frost as Dr. Leo Richmond, and Donna Mitchell as Connie Bates. The movie was written by Joseph Stefano and directed by Mick Garris. And rumors are trivia uh, on the film. Uh, Mick Garris has gone on record calling Anthony Perkins one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult, actor he's ever had to deal with. Henry Thomas sustained nerve damage to his hand when, during a scene where he is using a knife to stab into these ice cream buckets that were filled with blood. Uh, the back of the blade went through his hand and uh, he still has a scar from that. After viewing the film, Anthony Perkins called it the best of the Psycho sequels. Uh, during the uh, premiere, uh, Janet Lee stated that multiple endings were shot for the film. This apparently was a publicity stunt. Mick Garris has gone on record saying that only one ending was shot for the film. This was the only film in the Psycho franchise to be shot at the newly constructed Universal Studios Florida. Replicas of the Bates Motel and the Bates Mansion were reconstructed there. The sets were ultimately torn down about eight years later. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Psycho 4. Uh, I did a, uh, a breakdown of Anthony Perkins, my top 10 favorite Anthony Perkins films earlier this year. And, uh, Psycho 4 as my third favorite Anthony Perkins film and my third favorite film in the Psycho franchise. I still have my old Good Times video <laughs> VHS copy of it. This was the f one of the only times it was released on VHS outside of the initial releases uh, in the early 90s. Uh, this is, of course, the Scream Factory release, and it has a really good commentary with Olivia Hussey, who played Norma Bates in the film, as well as director Mick Garris. Um, when this film premiered uh, 30 years ago, 
Uh, I uh, avoided going to a big family function. It was a big uh, celebration for my Uncle Max. It was his birthday. So all of my family was there and chose to stay behind and watch and tape this film as well as the original Psycho, which aired directly after it as opposed to going to a family function. Now, in retrospect, I kind of regret doing that now uh, because a lot of my family members that were there that night have passed on and uh, I really miss a lot of my family. But at the time I was 16 years old, just starting my junior year of high school and I had followed the production of Psycho 4 to the extent that you, the limited extent you could back in the day before there was the internet and, and things like that. But I believe uh, I saw something in like the TV guide um, where it showed that Anthony Perkins was filming Psycho 4. He had been on a couple of talk shows as well, like the Arsenio Hall show, if people remember that. Uh, he was on, I believe, David Letterman. And he had talked about a fourth Psycho film. I think on Arsenio Hall, he had talked about it when he was promoting Edge of Sanity. He said that they were talking about doing a fourth film. And then there was a write-up when he directed the film Lucky Stiff, it was originally called Mr. Christmas Dinner. He directed that film. He had talked that there was a prequel um, to Psycho that was being looked into and, and talked about. Uh, not committing 100% that it was going to be made. And being that it was a prequel and it was going to be going back to Norman's childhood, you know, there was speculation on my part that he would even be playing Norman Bates again. But I was grateful that they brought him in to sort of be the bookend, you know, that Norman Bates is rehabilitated out of the asylum. So it does talk about in brief moments even though Stefano chose to kind of ignore the events that had happened in Psycho 2 and 3 which led to some continuity issues that I still have a problem with uh, but it does talk about that you know it's been four years since uh, Psycho 3 um, and it's been four years since he was recommitted to the institution after the events of that film uh, and he's married now and he's at, he's at home, his wife is working, and he ends up being drawn to this radio show where it's talking about matricide, murdering your mother, and he calls in and talks about, you know, what he went through as a child, which ultimately led up to him uh, poisoning his mother and her lover. Uh, I really love this film. Like I said, there's a few continuity issues. I think the biggest one for me has always been... Um, it's a small one for some people, but one of the biggest problems I had with this one is the death of Norman's father and the introduction of Chet Rudolph, who is Norma Bates's uh, boyfriend. In the original Psycho, uh, when Norman talks to Marion Parlor as she's eating about his mother and you know his father as well, um, he talks about that when his mother met the man, you know, he says mother met a man, doesn't really say the name of the man, but that the man, the, the boyfriend had talked her into building the motel. But when the boyfriend shows up in this movie, the motel's already been in business for years. So that was kind of something that I thought was kind of a little wonky, and especially coming from Stefano, who, you know, wrote the screenplay for the original film. The other thing is that, you know, it was established in Psycho 3 that Mrs. Spool killed Norman's father and kidnapped him. That is completely excised from this film, and it says that Norman's father died from beast stings and that was something that I just had a big problem with as well I just didn't like that they completely cut that out that was a huge part of Psycho 3 was realizing that Norma was really Norman's mother and that Mrs. Spool was his aunt um, so that was something that always bothered me about it but it wasn't enough for me to dislike the film Strings of this film, I think, of course, Tony Perkins was his swan song as Norman Bates. It was also the year that he was diagnosed with having AIDS. Uh, so I think he was already filming it when he was diagnosed. It was, uh, his blood was tested for AIDS and then the results were leaked to the National Enquirer prior to Perkins finding out for himself that he had the virus. Uh, he looks really great in this film. I always thought he didn't look really healthy in Psycho 3. Um, I think he looks better in this film and I think he gives a great performance. Much more understated than he did in Psycho 3, but I still I enjoy that film as well. But I've always liked this one a little bit more. I think it's more on par with the first two films uh, in the franchise, which are my favorites. Uh, I also love, love CCH Ponder. Been a fan of her since seeing this film. Henry Thomas I knew as Elliot from E.T. at this point, so it was really interesting to see him take on a much more adult role. I think he really uh, captured some of the facial mannerisms of uh, Tony Perkins uh, as Norman Bates, and I really liked what he brought to the role. Uh, I think he did a great job. The, the surprise for me was Olivia Hussey because, and I think it's actually mentioned in the Psycho Legacy documentary that Rob Galuzzo directed, uh, when Adam Green talks about 
I think Adam Green talks about it, and even McGarris talks about it in an interview, is that Ma Mother's hot in this film because Olivia Hussey was gorgeous. And what we've always known Mother to be is this old woman. I mean, that's kind of, you know, what it was established in the original Psycho this movie. She's, she's gorgeous. She's hot and attractive. But then at the same token, you see how twisted she is and how much she manipulates Norman. And you just understand how helpless he felt, how she sort of kept him isolated from everybody. And when the boyfriend, Chet Rudolph, comes in, who's completely an over-the-top jerk-off, uh, you just see how that plays against Norman and you know how he manipulates Norma, how he kind of picks on Norman, who has, you know, who has been kind of coddled his whole life and then abused. Uh, so, I mean, it's really just well done. And you just really understand um, like the, the, the torture that Norman is going through. And you see what drives him to do what he does. The scene where Norman poisons uh, Norma and Chet is one of the most disturbing scenes in the entire franchise. That thing goes on forever. It's such a rough scene to watch because it just shows what poison would do to somebody. It's it's really a hard scene to watch. Uh, and, and I just think Mick Garris did a great job. This will always be my favorite film by Mick Garris, who's done some some great films. I think he's, he's a terrific director, but this will always be my favorite film of his. Uh, it's told in a very non-linear fashion as well. It's not like it starts from Norman's childhood and then just goes here and then goes here. It kind of jumps around a little. I think it's done very naturally how somebody would recall moments from their life. You find out uh, as Norman is talking to Fran Ambrose that his wife is pregnant. He never wanted her to be pregnant. He didn't want his legacy to carry on. He wanted the Bates line to end with him. So he's torn again. Um, not that he's gonna kill her as mother. Mother's gone. He's finally, you know, that's over. But he realizes how dangerous it is to have another Bates born into the world, someone that could be as tormented and troubled as he was as a child. You know, he has his wife meet him at the old Bates house and Bates Motel, which have long been abandoned since the last, the events of the last film. Ends up, you know, his wife, who was his therapist, ends up bringing him down from the edge in order to cleanse himself and let the past be the past. He ends up burning the psycho mansion down. Uh, I thought that was really effective because you see, you know, flashes of all of the spirits that are still within the house. And I thought that was really kind of clever the way it was done. And there were moments in the film that I really thought uh, Norman Bates wasn't going to make it out. One thing I love about this film, and maybe some people wouldn't like it, but it has a happy ending. Um, he's free at the end of this film. He's he's battled his demons, he's won, he has his family now. And you know, there were rumors about there being a Psycho 5. I've heard it many times. I don't know if that was ever really anything other than a rumor. Uh, they were gonna call it Psycho 5 The End and it was gonna deal, I think it was gonna revolve around uh, Norman Bates's child. Um, I think, you know, as much as I would have loved to see Perkins come back and play Norman Bates again, uh, had he not passed away two years after this film came out. You know, I think this is a perfect uh, end to that storyline. I think it is a great resolution for this tortured character that we all cared about, even though he's done horrible things. He's been through hell. He finally was able to beat his demons. It always just made me happy. Yeah, this film is, is really important to me. I can't believe it's been 30 years. Um, you know, it's crazy because when this aired, it had been 30 years since the original Psycho had come out. And I got to watch that, you know, right after it uncut. It was the first time I had seen the full uh, version of the film. I remember recording it on VHS and watching them back to back. And uh, yeah, it was it was just so much fun that night, even though I got to miss a, probably what would have been a great family event. I got to see a lot of pictures from it and I regret it to this day. but. In some ways I don't because this is always going to be a very special memory for me. And um, I have a terrific poster of this that's up here on the ceiling uh, that my uncle got me, my Uncle Tom. Uh, back in 1991, I was uh, vacationing up where he lived in Oregon. Uh, my family and I were all there and we went to rent movies. And I saw this poster on the wall and I remember talking to the guy that ran the video store and said, hey, you know, my uncle lives in town. If you guys are ever ready to throw this away, if you could, you know, let my uncle know or, you know, I'll pay for it or whatever. And he remember he wrote my name down and that night at my hotel uh, where I was staying with my mom and my grandparents and everything, my uncle brought me the poster. So I've had that poster since 1991, probably one of the oldest things here in the horror zone. 
but it always meant a lot to me because it was a gift from my uncle. And what really sucks is I had the promotional poster that Showtime put out. I had sent away for it because there was a contest that you could enter to win like a trip to Universal Studios Florida and you could go on the back lot and see the Psycho House and everything. Uh, I had the poster and when we moved here, I don't know what happened to it. So I've never put it up here in the Horror Zone. I had it in our old apartment. I'm hoping one day I come across it because that poster goes for big bucks. Right. I'm sure one day I'm going to stumble across it in a box in the garage. But uh, yeah, just wanted to take this time to pay tribute to a very important film of mine, Psycho for the Beginning. But not a lot of people talk about this film, so I definitely recommend people seeking it out. You get a chance. Uh, I know the Scream Factory release is still available, um, but seek out Psycho for the Beginning. I think it's a terrific swan song for Tony Perkins' uh, amazing run of four films as Norman Bates, and I also think it's a terrific conclusion to an amazing uh, series of films. Uh, like I said, it's for me, it's Friday the 13th, Psycho, and then Halloween. Those films are the best uh, horror film franchises uh, for me growing up, and uh, couldn't go you know, this is a big milestone for this year, and I still remember like it was yesterday watching it for the first time. So, just wanted to share my thoughts. If anyone else is a fan of this film, uh, let me some comments down below. I would love to hear everybody else's opinion on this film. Also, I apologize. I know there's a lot of comments that I've gotten on some of the most recent videos. I've taken kind of a break uh, from social media for a couple weeks, but I will be answering all of the questions and comments that I've gotten over the last few uh, videos that I've shot um, really means a lot. Some of my last few videos didn't really do very well, but I'm still happy with them and I'm happy for anybody that checked them out and left a comment. Uh, thanks so much again for all the support. Thanks so much for watching my tribute to Psycho 4 and I promise there's some really cool stuff coming up real soon. we got Friday the 13th to look forward to in a few days and I'm planning to do something real cool. I hope, I hope everyone will stay tuned for that. And I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Take care, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Peace.